Hi, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Laura. Hi, hello, welcome. Inspired by It's Just Steph. I will have her channel linked down below. Uh, but I'm very inspired by a lot of her content. And today I wanted to do something that's very inspired by her, which is kind of talking about my favorite wintry eyeshadow palettes. And I have them kind of separated into categories. So I have my extra sparkly eyeshadows, I have my neutral eyeshadows, and then I have my colorful eyeshadows. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you are craving and wanting to reach for this winter that's really going to give you the most winter vibes possible. To kick things off, I have my stack of neutrals in front of me and I'm going to... Guys, I didn't mean to do it this way, but I have comically a lot of expensive palettes in this category. So just grain of salt. You definitely don't need to splurge on these palettes. The reason I have these is one, either I got a sale on them. Two, they were gifted to me in some capacity. The least expensive one in the stack was gifted to me. And then three, I splurged and used all of my Ulta points on two of the palettes. So I did not even spend my actual like money out of girl math money, you know, in no specific order. So we'll kick things off with, I guess, the least expensive one is just on the top of my stack, and that's going to be my Going Coconuts palette by ColourPop. This, in the winter, I really, really, really crave neutral eyeshadows, and something like this, for, mine is comically mutilated, um, because I've used so much of it. This is definitely a kind of color story that I definitely love reaching for this time of year. I should put the shade Palm Reader back, but it is in a different palette right now. But a color story like this that just goes with literally every single thing I'm wearing, whether I'm wearing a little bit more like glammed up kind of outfit or I'm just going to the office. This goes with literally everything. And these are the tones I really want to wear this time of year. Winter is definitely my season for neutrals. I don't know if that stems from wanting to wear like a bright red lip more often or if it's just like the season of I feel a little bit more glam and a little bit like, I don't know, sexier when I wear a, like just a neutral eyeshadow. And this time of year, I've loved reaching for it all year this year, but really, really love it for the winter time. Like this middle shade is such a beautiful, like rose gold kind of shade. Absolutely stunning. And Expensive City is next. Man, oh man. Again, I did not, I'm not encouraging anyone to go out and dish out all the mountains of money that these cost. But if you have them, I encourage you to reach for them this time of year. So the next palette, maybe, hmm, I guess the neutral that isn't as neutral neutral as the other neutrals, did that make any sense? Kind of like an offshoot of a neutral, if that makes sense. And that is going to be the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. I think this is going to be a perfect palette to reach for this time of year. Uh, I do have a little bit of eye irritation with one of the shades, this guy down here. But these kinds of shades are perfect for the cooler months. It gives you a little bit of color, but it's definitely more subdued. I think that these kinds of shades also pair really well on cooler toned complexions really, really nicely. I think they look great on every eye color. I also really like the different formulas and the different textures in this palette. I'm really sad. I love the cream to powder formulas, but this one down here unfortunately does cause my eyes to water insanely bad when I wear it. I wore it once and figured that one out. And, but the shade Go Go here is another one of those kind of cream to powders. So is Andy and they work so pretty and so well together and just in other looks. The shade Glitz and Psychedelic are definitely the two showstoppers in my opinion in this palette. Amara is in a different palette. I think that's in my Sephora. Safari palette also. So did I need another one of them? No, but it looks really great in this palette. And I, I used every shade in this palette already in 2023. And I really enjoyed every look and every combination that I used with this. Then we definitely have more neutral neutral kind of palettes. So maybe we should go with this guy first. This is the very expensive one. Now I did buy this from Look Fantastic when... <laughs> When it was getting discontinued, I went, no, I need it. And while this might not be everyone's holiday kind of cup of tea, this definitely looks like the holidays to me. I think more like cozy holiday vibes, like 
we're a little bit more dimly lit maybe we have that candlelight glow from the gold and that that was always like my favorite service to go to was like the candlelit service so it just kind of reminds me of like starry night like cool nighttime um winter nighttime just it it just reminds me of like seeing the stars at night at christmas snow on the ground with the little white sparkly bits this is just such a great winter palette to me so really neutral but you still get like the pops of blue and lastly another palette that i ended up splurging my points on and i feel like the color story is definitely more wintry and that is the natasha denona retro glam palette and i really love clearly mints we love a mint kind of shade over here it's my favorite kind of eyeshadow are these like minty sagey green tones i just freaking love them so much clearly kind of like a muted down christmas where you have red and green but they're definitely more subdued and you have the more muted tones of them so that pink that dusty rose with that more sagey kind of green and i think that this is perfect for this time of year just a really neutral it looks festive because you kind of are encapsulating the tones to it but you're not like punch you in the face with like a bright green eyeshadow, you know? Moving right along to colorful palettes as we kind of segued with the one that might be a stretch into the neutral tones, I definitely have some colorful palettes to talk about next. So I, I guess I'll talk to the one that, I guess I'll talk about the one that has, I've talked about a lot on my channel recently, and that's because it's in my project level up. And it's this guy. It's the Fantasy Cosmetica Rogue palette. And the outside packaging pretty much fits the, hits the nail on the head with the color story that's on the inside. But this is definitely winter to me with the purples over here and then these like cool blue tones. This duochrome up here is definitely winter appropriate in my opinion. And yeah, this is definitely just a palette that screams winter. I'm really excited and going to have a great time using this in the next couple months. And I'm really excited that this is going to be in the forefront of my mind. Paired along with this one, we have a very expensive palette to kind of talk about that has a similar color story. Man, I took so many shades out of this. Maybe I should put them back so I don't embarrass myself with how empty this is. Okay, so kind of on the same color story that the Rogue is, we have another giant Natasha Denona behemoth palette. This is the purple blue palette from Natasha Denona. When I bought this, it was a two pack with the very, very large palettes for like a Black Friday deal. I knew when I went into this that this would be my least used palette. And oh, how the turntables turn, because man, oh man, this is actually more used than the green-brown palette, specifically because this was in a project level up, so I got a lot of use out of this palette, like, immediately. You have a choice to go really colorful with this palette, you have a choice to go more warmer colorful with this palette, but you also have some really nice neutral shades that you can wear and kind of ground any of the super colorful shades. You can use like the more steely kind of shade here that's almost a taupey steel and really make these blues not look as like holy crap these are blue i'm excited to continue to get more use out of this palette then moving on to my other remaining colorful palettes we'll talk about well they're both indie so i guess it doesn't really matter maybe this guy first so this is the kaleidos futurism six lunar lavender palette this color story is lavenders and i think that this is just perfect for this time of year i think you have some really great um shades to ground out a look over on the corners you have some of these colorful shades that really can make a look very colorful these two toppers they're more toppers than anything they could be worn with the neutrals to just create a really beautiful neutral look or they could be worn with the sh more colorful mattes to create like an all colorful look so this is something again that is going to be perfect for the cooler months of the year where things are a little bit more deep dark it's dark outside for longer, unfortunately, so I feel like these tones are going to go really well for this time of year. The Kaleidos formula is one of my absolute favorites, especially for matte shadows. It, they are so buttery soft. Then the Adept Cosmetics and Ninhydrin palette is actually the other like toption that I have for my winter colorful palettes. Again, I feel like it's kind of that same thing where these are more jewel tones, so to me... 
it just kind of fits the vibe of winter a little bit more where things are a little bit deeper, darker, sultrier more often throughout the months. So I feel like these kinds of tones, especially like these cooler tones down here, even this guy here that to me looks very orange, but when I look at it on the monitor is very purple. And this guy is very blue to me, but to you, it's very green. So very interesting, but I think that this is absolutely stunning. I could have worn something like this or this in my look today and it would have been really pretty. But I think that this is, again, another really great one for the cooler months of the year. I feel like some of these jewel tone ones might be a little bit too dark for me for all over the lid, but they make a really good like lower lash grunging out shade. I like to wear those kinds as or just like an outer corner kind of shade and then put something with a similar kind of shift that's in a lighter tone. I like to pair those together and it just really makes the look take off in my opinion. So I'm really excited to get more use out of this in the winter months and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really, really looking forward to using this guy. Then last we have a small stack of palettes that are extra, extra sparkly and that's kind of why I'm putting them in this. They're definitely winter and when I think winter and think of the snow, I always think of that crisp white sheet of snow outside and then the way that the moonlight or like the sunlight hits it and you get that like beautiful little sparkle that comes off of the snow and how can anything in nature be prettier than this? I I hate the cold, but I really appreciate the way a cold scenery looks, you know? So I have a couple palettes in front of me and I guess we'll talk about the one that I don't know if it's still available first. And that is this guy here. This is by Sugar Drizzle. This is the On Top of the Mountains and Beneath the Stars. Technically, this is a highlighter palette, but I bought it with the sole purpose of wanting them for eyeshadows because I freaking as eyeballing the Cleona iridescence for a long time and before I decided to buy the bundle I went ahead and bought this so I freaking love this I have pan in the shade over here from it being in a project pan but I hope you can see that I do have usage out of all of the shades in this palette this palette has been very loved by me this year and they all look very much the same these all look different on the eyes and they're all so so stunning maybe I should give you a swatch of a couple of them so I have these three different shades. It was kind of my precursor into knowing if I wanted the Cleona multi-chromes. And we know how I feel about the Cleona iridescent multi-chromes because I ended up buying a couple bundles of them. I freaking love iridescent shadows now and I feel like this was my tippy toe into them. Then another one that is a very new to my collection as I'm filming this. I am pre-filming by the way. It is November 25th so this is posting well in filming this well in advance but I have a collection in front of me that I haven't really used all of the shades but I know this is going to be perfection this winter. But that is the Lost Library collection from Fantasy Cosmetica. They so wonderfully gifted the collection to me. So I got all of the magnetic singles and the palette itself that is sold separately. You can buy it all as a bundle, but these are the most holographic, reflective, just beautiful eyeshadows I think I have ever used. I don't think I've ever used something with this much dimension and shift to it. These are just incredible and I I know I'm going to just really love reaching for these. I think that these in particular are going to be what helps me ground some of those more colorful shades that are still left in my no pan left behind. So this is definitely something I am so excited to reach for. And then last but not least that twinkle I keep talking about I feel like is perfect for the Urban Decay Moon Dust Palette. Now this is the Space Rider version. They have the more silver version. That's just not my kind of cup of tea. That also though, the shimmers in those look incredible and they're definitely more cool tone, which again is great for this time of year. They have more of those molten metal kind of shades versus this is just very beautiful neutral toppers. This is what the Moon Dust Space Rider Palette looks like. It's just, they don't look like anything super special in the pan to me, but when they're swatched out, these are so wet and reflective and just incredible. And again, perfect for those kind of washes of color where maybe you want to have something brighter in the outer corner or lower lash line, and then just something really effortless on the lid to give you that really wet look to your eyelids. 
But that is it for this video. I appreciate you guys clicking on, watching, and spending some time with me today during this holiday season. I hope you guys are staying healthy, sane, and safe, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye!